This is Andreas Pop Culture Guide. Today is the latest Andreas Pop Culture Respective Slash Review. And today we're discussing Superman 3. Because Superman 3 has its 4 year anniversary issue. Superman 3 crash landed in theaters 4 years ago on this June 17, 1982. While it recouped its budget at the box office back then, the film was a major letdown for critics and fans alike, like myself. I was one of those fans. I mean, I'm not a fan of the Super. Well, I'm one of those fans uh, of the three films: Superman the movie and Superman Two. Were easily two of my favorite movies of all time growing up. I was, uh, yeah, when I was a young kid, when I saw Superman Three the first time, to expect the same brilliance as the first two films was a yeah asking for this film. Instead, what I got, we all got, was something else entirely. Superman 3 is a lot of things, namely camp, campy and uneven film, and, but in 1983, it should fall like an unimaginated disaster for this Superman fan of today. Now, Superhero Sandra has experienced more than its fair share of highs and lows. The 20th century has been a golden age of superior movies, but the same cannot be said for 20th century uh, Superman films. For every truly great superhero for the era, another was always unwatchable. Every, even Chris Reed, whose take on Superman is still beloved, started in some clunkers as the Ministry. That includes the 1983's Superman 3 as state, which paired me up with all the reforms. I mean, come on, Richard Pryor, and, of course, uh, Matthew, uh, Robert Vaughn from the Man uh, from Uncle TV show. Now, let's celebrate this for the university to share with this film. After coming off the acclaimed Reeves' first two films, Superman 3 failed to meet their critical and financial success. But here's the reason why. Yeah. Superman 3 is one of the first examples of what can go wrong when a superhero prioritized spectacle over story. Now, this movie is directed by again Richard Lester, who did the second film after Richard Donner was fired from the first one. Now, the film follows Christopher Superman as he finds himself in an unexpected conflict with a powerful CEO named Ross Webster, who decided he wants to kill the Man of Steel so he can take over the world's markets without anyone standing in his way. Now, Webster hires Gus Gardner, uh, Richard Pyre's character, a unexpected uh, computer genius who gets looked into helping his boss create weapons and design to kill some Throughout the film, which is loosely follows the events of the Far Superior Superman 2, both Leaves, Clark Kent, and Pirates Guts find themselves in a grand camping conflict with the best and worst versions of themselves. The movie doesn't handle either the conflict with much grace, although Reeves' performance as the grand remains un unapologetically great still at those two films. Now, despite the fact that Superman 3 forces him to participate in a nominous Actors existence that have no real place in the story, as well as a seduction subplot revolving Buster's bombshell assistant, uh, Lorelai. That is, is to put it high, lightly, extremely dumb. The same can unfortunately be said much of Superman 3. Film that's unsure either it wants to be a superhero with film or a silly James Bond adventure, or just a straight up classical comedy. There's a reason why people dislike this film. And really, pretty much the balance in this film was weak, and the comedy was really bad. Now, Ross Webster is played great by Robert Bond, but his team and compared to Gus's work in the original film, Lex Luthor was going to kill millions of people to make a fortune in this. It's inventory, but Webster is trying to strike the Columbia's coffee crowd and steal all the world's oil. The worst thing that Lester did was when he tried to kill someone. It's probably a mistake when one of the side turns the entry into a Richard Pryor cup, which ended up being not a great copy either. Besides that, I still think the movie's best effects were impressive at the time, and it's still good after 40 years. There's still a, a campy charm to many of the Superman Street biggest action moments. It does have great action moments, and the special effects does help it to be standing out compared to its other predecessors. Superman 4. But the set pieces and stunt gags almost all go flat because there's no really reason for many of them to take place. Most of Superman 3's biggest action beats seem to 
accessory as so that lest their ends need to play around with the then state of the art tools at their disposal. The film's reliance on the hollow spectacle is a problem that continues to play the superior software. I mean, example this year alone, well, Atman 3 and The Flash 2023 have been criticized for polarizing visual effects and set pictures over characters in the story. What makes it Superman 3 industry and 2023 is how empathetically it highlights the problems with what that kind of, that kind of thinking of filmmaking could happen to franchises. Especially true if you watch the film right after these first two films, both of which are still tremendously fun. Now, to just wrap up, Superman 3, it's overall a not great sequel, but it still has its charm like the first two, but it just doesn't have the you know, cohesive plot and engaging villains to, to really follow this film great. It's, it's definitely the weakest, but for me, it's definitely the worst of Superman. I still enjoy at least Superman 4 because it was at least trying to be serious, but still. Superman 3 and 4 are the weakest in the read films. Now, thank you everyone for listening to the Superman 3 40th anniversary review. I hope you guys have a good week and ciao.